We're off to the Valley for Charlton against Ipswich. The commentator is Peter Drury. Well, is there a more upbeat, glad to be alive club than Charlton right now? Out of the homelessness and pitilessness of a decade ago, it's a marvellous metamorphosis here. Wembley waits, they're a goal ahead, their defence is unbreached for 12 playing hours, and they're only inconvenienced by Sunday's dismissal of Danny Mills, whose subsequent suspension causes a call-up for Anthony Barnes, and by the shock omission of top scorer Clive Mendonca, who injured his back in light training this morning, so Steve Jones starts. Ipswich don't consider themselves beaten yet, no first division side has lost fewer away games and they're one of only two visiting teams to have won at the Valley this season. Their one changes at full back, Jamie Clapham, unfortunate scorer in the first leg, is offered some recovery time, Maurizio Tarico switches to the left side and Gus Uhlenbeek starts as he finished on Sunday on the right. David Johnson oddly is this season's top scorer both for Ipswich and for Berry. Whatever the outcome, Charlton will keep on progressing. Summer redevelopment work has already begun here, and a home win would help raise what's left of the roof. It's not an evening given to neutrality. The exception is Eddie Wollstonehome, who oversaw the Barnet Colchester first leg on Saturday. There's a massively vibrant feel here, evocative of the vast valley crowds of yesteryear. Charlton's last promotion 12 seasons ago coincided with their nomadic period, so the aim of their game now is to bring top flight football back to this their own home for the first time since 1957. Matthew for Johnson. Johnson with the early ball in, Holland's header. Matt Holland is the Ipswich Town Supporters Player of the Year. So often he has provided for David Johnson, their prolific goal scorer, but this was Johnson's cross and Holland's erroneous header. Holland against Kinsella's arm and not vice versa. Referee turned a blind eye. Erroneous clearing header from Yowes. Gathered by Stockwell, who can run at Barnes. Aim at Mathy, could come down for Johnson. Now it's Kieran Dyer! <laughs> While Dyer's finger was on the trigger, and when he finally released the shot, it was full of vigour, and only just short of meaningful direction. There's the man of the moment, Sasa Ilic. Eight games without conceding a goal, 12 hours of playing time. It's a phenomenal record. Ball in by Heaney. Away by Tarico. Keith Jones, Sean Newton. And even from what appeared an impossible angle, he was prepared to have a crack. Right, it denied Newton the space he really wanted. But reading the ball from Keith Jones ably, he'll only rue that his first touch wasn't a little neater. And now Stockwell has space to run into. It's a good ball for Dyer. And another really fine interception by Eddie Yowes. And a good ball for Jones to chase as well. Bright weights in the middle. Newton's chugging forward as well, Jones with an earlier ball. Partially away by Venus, and gathered now by Heaney. Then Newton, and Uwenbeek has to concede a corner. First corner of the contest, Neil Heaney over it. Yout inside the six-yard box, right at the far post, and the right! He has so much experience and an uncanny knowledge as to when to time his run and meet the ball. And he met it and had a yard and a half all to himself, Mark Bright. Hit a rod by Bowen, and that's a good ball from Bowen. And Jones is through the middle, and Conley's going back, and Bright could drop it. Good save.
right again was through off the back of this excellent ball from halfway from Mark Bowen. And no one will be more grateful to the goalkeeper than Jason Cundy, whose miss kick was awful. Great shot had ferocity, and the England under 21 goalkeeper was agile enough. He went through all of this last year and lost on away goals. They, by the way, don't count double until after extra time. Newton's done well again. Aimed at Heaney. They've all let it fall to it. And it's won it cleverly from Ullenbeek, who resorted to the crudest means. Eddie Wollstone-Home considers the free-kick punishment enough. But it's from this sort of position that Neil Heaney can be at his most potent. Yao to the back post. Rufus getting up there. Breaks there as well. What a save! Fantastic reflexes from Richard Wright. Mark Wright must have believed he'd score. Yao's header back was spot on. Rufus was an important presence. And what a fantastic stop from Richard Wright. This has gone over the top of Yalt, but it won't reach Rufus, at least in the first instance. There are those who believe that the England number one's jersey into the 21st century is already spoken for. And there is the potential wearer, and you saw why. Oh, well, it's an awkward ball from Kinsella, it's come to Matthew! And the Charlton skipper, Mark Kinsella, is going to have to shake hands with his goalkeeper there for saving his blushes after Matthew pounced on the error and caused Illich to pound behind. Petter's corner, Illich with a punch, good distance. He held off Rufus, but not Kinsella. Super Bowl from the skipper. Jones racing through. This time more comfortable for Richard Wright. Just a sign or two, though, in the last five or six minutes that Charlton are working out a way through. Touch from Bright for Newton. Still Sean Newton and still Sean Newton! Oh, fantastic goal! Absolutely terrific goal from Sean Newton! And Charlton Athletic are a step closer to Wembley and an inch closer possibly to the Premiership. Look at that bright smile and how justified he is in showing it. The neatest footwork imaginable, and the most sumptuous finish. Bright's part was important. Newton's was critical. 1-0 to Charlton on the night, and 2-0 on aggregate. This is Sonner, came on at the scoring of the goal. Threw for Dyer, chance for Kieran Dyer. Flags up. It was 
Johnson's finish. Son is through ball, seemed excellent. Dyer perhaps have begun his run a half yard too soon. Well cut out by Kinsella. Steve Jones, bright alone for Charlton in the middle. And Jones pretty crudely uprooted by Jason Cundy. The scoreline is such that he can see the funny side. Here come Yauts and Rufus to join Bright and Jones in the middle. Heaney's free kick. Yauts at the back post, hit the post. No one deserves a goal more. Good free kick from Heaney, and Yao, who is a game Liverpudlian, a give-it-all kind of a player, who has defended stoutly and made his presence felt at set pieces, was very close to tying the whole thing up. For support, Heaney forthcoming. And a good ball from Heaney. And Jones is quickly onto it, and Bright is surging forward. And Jones will go himself! For a big man, he did turn sweetly. Heaney's pass had been excellent, and Jones was close to making it count with the final kick of a first half which is being given an uproarious reception inside the valley. It's 12 years since Charlton celebrated a promotion, but Sean Newton's outstanding strike 10 minutes before half-time in the second leg of this playoff semi-final means that now they are 135 minutes of playing time, possibly away from further elevation to the highest flight. Half-time, it's Charlton 1, Ipswich 0, 2-0 to Charlton on aggregate. This ground once housed 75,000 plus for a cup tie, even allowing for its scaling down. This club surely, though, has rarely felt more buoyant. A new million pound shirt sponsorship was signed today for the next three seasons, which could now be in the Premiership. Ipswich, for their part, need two goals to force extra time, after which they could go through on away goals. Newton to the byline, and he kept it in play, Bones cross, <laughs> flick was by Bright against Venus, Exploiting the space, Cundy with the tackle. Oh, excellent turn by Matthew. Petter profited, Jones was the fouler. And Keith Jones becomes the first Charlton player in the book. He joins Bobby Petter, on whom he committed the foul as a yellow carded player. Tariko, Sonner, Danny Sonner, Matthew in the middle, 
Rufus has lost it, Matthew Schultz. An important closing down by Barnes. Matthew at the near post, Venus on the line. Comfortable catch for Illich. his back pass had just enough especially once he'd hindered Steve Jones Dyer has a bit of space again Petter to Rico Dyer's continued his run but in keeping it in play he failed to keep himself in play Danny Sonner, forward for Johnson, right for Uhlenbeek, Matthews at the near post, Johnson's head up! A yard and a half either side and Johnson just might have made a tie of it. Ipswich aren't giving this up by any means. Petter, Johnson. Petter, Holland through the middle, Jones away, so Ipswich come again, Tarico. Kinsella shielding his defender as well. There's the header from Johnson, comfortable enough catch for Sasa Illich. 25 minutes for Ipswich to get two goals. Johnson, the likeliest source. Scowcroft in front of him. Johnson's going to have a crack. Sasa Illich beginning to forget what it's like to pick the ball out. Away by Bowen. Four again by Cundy. Danny Sonner. This dive was tokenism, really. Watched it past the post, and Danny Sonner and Northern Ireland B international. Sees that particular hope dashed. Charlton Athletic is a genuine community club. These are the people who saved this club, and they, it appears, are going to get the day out at Wembley which they, perhaps more than any supporters in the land, deserve. Dyer. Now Uhlenbeek. Petter's available. Uhlenbeek goes himself. Kinsella got an important touch. Yao with an excellent ball out of defence. And Jones now contests Venus. And Bright is steaming up in support. Steve Jones! Great effort from Jones, for whom it was a final contribution. Ala Jeff Hurst, if it wasn't going to go in, then Rose Ed would have done. It did do, and his standing ovation is well deserved. Replaced as he is now for Charlton by Paul Mortimer, who's missed the last half dozen games through injury. who, in recent years at least, has been part of the Charlton fabric and is a worthy participant in this very special moment for the club. <laughs> 1987 was Charlton's last trip to Wembley. They lost then to a Colin Hendry goal for Blackburn in the full Members' Cup. It's fair to say with to respect to that late competition, but this would mean an awful lot more. Dyer, aimed at 
Johnson, away as ever by Yates. And further clear from Newton, the Knights other hero. Johnson in a bit of space. Quickly closed down by Bowen. And the pass was a tired one. Meat and drink for Barnes. <laughs> well, it has been a long season. He'll wake up for Wembley. Johnson. to play Heaney over the free kick Bright near post Yalt at the back post Yalt with a header Got up well, but to no avail again. No wonder they're banging the drum in these parts. A genuine pride in the local team here. Here's Heaney. Running at Ullenbeck. Mortimer. Barnes inside of him. Mortimer wants to go himself. Still Paul Mortimer. And still. And he's still in the hands of Richard Wright. as long as it takes. Oh dear. It'll be a quiet trip back up the A12. Danny Sonner. 
Solo with the cross. Dyer at the back post. Comes out to Tariko. And with that, the tie presumably is over. Nor will it be three hours of football that that man will especially want to remember. watchers now and they all wear red shirts the cheers are for Charlton what a night for addicts of the addicts Alan Kerbishley Young, inventive, purposeful, unassuming, and most of all, very, very good at his job. Sean Newton, just a kid from Camberwell, and the scorer of a magnificent goal. Eddie Yao, as solid as the, at the back as any defender conceivably could be, and that's the face of defeat. Yao's the player of the match by any yardstick, surely. And here's amongst the broadest smiles. But there are 16,000 others who are grinning from ear to ear as Charlton, for the first time in a major fixture, are going to Wembley now for the first time since 1947. Newton the hero, Kermishley the mastermind. It's a fantastic night south of the river. And there's just a feeling now that with the Millennium Dome going up in Greenwich just down the road from here, that Charlton, as a club, have the makings of a 21st century outfit. They've won on the night by a goal to nil. They've won over two legs on aggregate by two goals to nil. Alan, you are a, a young manager, but you've still seen and done a lot in football. How does tonight compare with your other experiences? Oh, obviously, it's uh, great, my greatest achievement. and. Uh, you know, you go through a season, we've played 46 league games, had the disappointment of perhaps in any other year would have gone up. And, uh, you know, to come and do it now and get to win, we haven't won anything yet, but it's a great day out for the club. And we've put the club back on the map, I think. Yeah, all credit to Charlton. They worked very hard, made it difficult for, for us to score against. Got a lot of people behind the ball. Um, you know, considering that OG at home maybe was a, a telling factor over the two legs. But, um, you know, we're looking forward to next season. Um, we've got a lot of encouraging signs. Sean, what a goal and what a night. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Um, I'm just um, elated to be going to Wembley. I think the team's worked hard all season. And um, it just shows in our performance today that we really want to do it. I mean, this is the first cup I ever felt like I just... I've been moving around all my life. And it's now that I feel like I'm at home. It's fantastic. What do you think about Wembley? Wembley, okay. Wembley, dream come true. I think I'll be the only, I think I'll be the third Serbian to play at, um, at Wembley, or like the fourth Australian. So I'm a bit of a mixture. I'm a mixture of both, really. So it's an honour, it's a privilege, and and I think we'll do well over there too. The temptation, of course, is to to party now and maybe forget that you need one more win, don't you? We're having a couple of days off. So, Charlton are through to Wembley, but who would be the... Missing out on automatic promotion, you've come back and you've given this performance, you've done what you had to do. Well, we're there at Wembley, but we, we haven't done what we got, we've had to do, because we've got our game against Charlton. Um, one more to go, and then uh, we can celebrate, but it's going to be hard. We've shared the points with Sunderland this year, we drew there at their place, and uh, drew here. Two very good games. Peter Reid saw us first game of the season up at Middlesbrough, tipped us to be in there. When we played in the two games, he didn't change his opinion. And I think, you know, the two, two uh, sides that have got there, someone's got to win, I hope it's us. Dave Bassett, Charlton against Sunderland, great final. Yes, yeah, got all the ingredients of being an excellent final. And the fact that they were the teams that finished uh, third and fourth, I think, uh, vindicates the uh, final on this occasion. Charlton certainly deserved it on tonight's performance, didn't they? Well, certainly tonight I thought they played very well. I mean, they didn't give uh, Ipswich a sniff, and uh, Ipswich would be disappointed that they didn't cause any more problems. They protected their lead from the first leg, and uh, then Sean Newton got them in front. And uh, to be quite honest, you know, they were comfortable tonight. I mean, it was a great goal. They didn't even need Clive Mendonca. He was out. And then Sean Newton scores, well, 
Yeah, that was a bit of a blow for them missing uh, Clive early on. This is a throw on which they work on quite well and uh, Sean Newton's picked up the knockdown. He gets a little bit of a break here. The defender throws himself in, but he keeps his feet and then he cracks an excellent left foot shot in there. You know, the keeper's got no chance with that. You know, he had a little bit of luck on the first part, but uh, when he's, uh, the defender's opened up, he's uh, got an excellent finish. No one was going to stop that, and if it hadn't been for Wright, it could have been more, couldn't it? Yeah, Wright brought some very good saves off. I thought in the first half, uh, Cholton were very impressive, and, uh, you know, he had to make some excellent saves. We see here where Eddie Yorge has pulled off at a free kick, and this is a good effort here, but a knockdown. Mark Wright reacts very, very quickly, and this is an excellent save. It's a reaction save. Um, it's easy to say the keeper was, you know, well positioned. That was good play, in my opinion, by the keeper. The keeper really tested that. Illich not really tested here. You've got to do better to beat Illich because he's gone nine games now without being beaten. That's right. That's comfortable for him, really. He has to turn it over the bar. He hasn't tried to catch it, and uh, he's got a fine record. Is it something like 13 and a half hours without conceding exactly. a goal? And guess who was the last? tie to beat him. Yeah, well I worked it out, it must have been Forrest, but we conceded for. <laughs> <laughs> Sunderland, um, they've, I mean they've done enough, it's a great comeback isn't it? Yeah, it was a difficult game for Sunderland in my opinion because I think they went to Sheffield thinking on Saturday or Sunday that they could win the game or get a draw, they took the lead, ended up being beaten and that put Sheffield United in a good frame of mind in my opinion and uh, the, se the first half was going to be important but uh, they were up for it, they took the game to uh, Sheffield United and dominated the first half. I mean, I think it was about an hour before Sheffield United had an effort at the Sunderland goal and they got themselves de deservedly in front and got a little bit nervous towards the end, which is natural, but uh, thoroughly deserved the performance. The man Chantler got to watch is Kevin Phillips, now equaling that record of Brian Clough. Yeah, that's done well. I think he's also equaled uh, Pierre Van Hoydonk's record as well for the season. This is a shot. I mean, he just deflects the ball here. He's in the right spot, just gets a little deflection, which does Simon Tracy up. And, uh, you know, it's good play by him. He's in the right areas. And uh, I think Quinn and uh, uh, Phillips are very important, particularly Niall Quinn. I think he makes a difference to Sunderland. So, just 90 minutes to go. Who do you fancy? I think it's going to be very tight between the two teams. I mean, Sunderland, you could say a third, and, you know, we often say the team that finishes third doesn't get its just rewards, but Alan Kirbishley made the point. Both those teams got a good amount of points, which normally would have got them promoted or even get the title. And, uh, you know, as Alan said, they've had two draws this season. It's going to be very, very tight. tight. I think it's going to be important how the, each defence copes with both set of forwards, particularly if Clyde Mendock is back for Cholton. Going to put your neck on the line? <laughs> I think it might just go Sunderland's way. It just might go Sunderland's way. A bit too but strong? No, it's just a, just a, a little bit of opinion. You know, I mean, uh, it, you know, I mean, I wouldn't put money on it because Cholton have had an excellent season, and uh, you know, as I say, I mean, Alan would probably be quite pleased because usually when I tip anybody, the opposition win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave. Thanks very much for the moment.